Out here in the wilds of Moorestown, New Jersey, you can never be sure what you might find out in the bush. Oh, look at this fella. Isn't he a beauty? You gotta be very, very quiet when you sneak up on these guys. Just gingerly take him by the tail. Oh, he's asleep. Let's take a look at his teeth. These are razor sharp. They can cut through a, a two by four. They're so sharp. Oh my goodness! Oh, he's a feisty little fellow. Oh, let him go! Oh. He doesn't want to be disturbed at all. I think we better just leave him where we found him. To make me a big cake? No. What idea was that? To make a topographical map, and we heard you were from Australia. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I picked this. There's a, a huge rock in the middle of Australia. I don't know if you've heard of this. It's called Uluru, or Ayers Rock, and it's the biggest monolith, or biggest one rock, single rock in the world. We're going to attach this 2x4 like an axle, and it's going to sit underneath the car, underneath the metal of the car. Uh -huh. It's going to hold the wheels together, and it's going to support the weight of the car, and then this gets screwed into the wall. All right, I think that's in place. I feel like I got something on my face. Do I have anything on my face? No. What about me? No, no, you're fine. All right. Ford, Ford. Hey guys, model. guys, check this yeah. out. What is it? I'm so excited about oh, this bed. That? Look, it's got a little bone on what? the bed that what I made. What is that? For... It's a bed for Spike. That, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is not gonna fit him. Oh. That's Spike. Is this Spike? That's Ashley's <laughs> dog. This is for a Chihuahua. <laughs> These guys sure are some tough critics. <laughs> Spike says that's too does she own a small. Hamster? How's France going? Hey, I'm having my break here. What are you guys no, doing? No, you gotta get up the break. You need to get up and get to work. We got a cool. list get to work. for you. Yeah. All right, give me the list. We need an awning for Italy, a door for London, an ottoman for Spain, and of course the Eiffel Tower bed for France. Yeah. You know how long it took them to build the Eiffel Tower? Two years. And you want me to do it in two days? Yeah. That's a tall order. You're the man. Yeah. I'm the man. Yeah, you're the man. You got yeah. some what about these men? Are they going to help me out? That's yeah. That's what they're yeah. here for. Whoa. I know you don't know a lot about football, but um... I know a bit. Their goalposts are kind of yellow. <laughs> oh, they can't be white? No. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, While the girls fumble with the goalposts and carpentry... Welcome to Crayola's Amazing Race. I'm your host, Bart Shadlow. We're in Eastern PA, where our two teams will battle it out for the Amazing Race title. The goal, to emerge clear victors in children's art and stationery. Now our two teams won't just be battling each other, they'll also be racing against the weather because it looks like it's going to rain here. Anyway, our two teams are in place, but frankly it's not looking like an even contest. We began on a new addition. To give the house a true fieldstone look, the exterior of the farmhouse was sandblasted. While the contractor originally planned to refurbish the period windows, he soon discovered that the frames were beyond repair. So, new windows were ordered. Now work is continuing on the new addition, connecting the original farmhouse with the old summer kitchen in the back. Framing is progressing, new windows are being installed, and a new roof using slate mined at a local quarry is being constructed. Most of the exterior renovation work completed, it's time now to put down the roof. And typical of 19th century farmhouses, a slate roof is being used. But before we see the installation of the roof, let's take a look at our visit to Daly Slate Company, a quarry where the slate for our roof shingles was mined. To effect this change, a wooden superstructure will now be built around the existing roof, followed by a plywood subroof and new slate shingles. But first, this steel ridge beam and support post have to be put in place. Let's go meet Brett up on the roof. Brett, there's a lot of drama here. Why all this? Well, this is uh, a post that we're running down to our foundation. This is going to hold up our new ridge uh, beam that we're installing. Guys, come on, time is of the essence, let's get going. All right, I need to split them three groups. You three go over there, you two through here, and then you three around the side of the house. Are you ready to go? Come on. All right. Woo! Come on. 
Hey, it's Sly Bennington from Ultimate Makeover. You are among 10,000 pharmaceutical sales reps who wrote into our show. And we have decided to do an Ultimate Makeover of Pravacol. I can't believe this. We're so excited. So are you ready for a brand makeover? Great. What would you like to see? So Matt, has the hospital landscape seen any growth? We have more than 2,300 hospitals where Pravacol is unrestricted on formulary. That's approximately 40% of hospitals nationwide. The team did a great job securing this access. Well, what are the tasks at hand? We need to continue to grow Provocal in patient use and drive outflow from our contracted hospitals. The reps will learn more about this at their POA breakout sessions. All right, then. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Lisa. This is looking great. But do you know where I can find the tools to finish this job? Yeah. Now, this is still a work in progress. We've got a new visual aid that's on its way. But in the meantime, we've got resources on myopathy, DDI, dosing, and patient education, as well as three objectives that we know everyone can execute. So do we have the passion for private code? <laughs> yeah! yeah. Woo, let's go! Thanks, Sly. The thanks go to you. We may have made the ultimate makeover to Pravacol, but it's you guys that make Pravacol the ultimate brand. Another happy ending. See you next time on Ultimate Makeover.